how severely constrained is going to be our corresponding string theory here hamiltonian itself vanishes but i will i will explain to you that it's not strongly equal to zero it's weakly equal to zero in the sense of dirac okay so it's uh, actually let me let me just just uh, mention to you what is a strong equality and what is a weak equality but i will take it up more properly little bit later supposing i have this volume of this room and supposing i have a box one of the surfaces is this table top and other on all the six sides now the the theory is a constrained system or we are considering a constrained theory so what happens that supposing this surface hyper surface uh is defined by the constraints of the theory then these constraints of the theory hold strongly only and only on this surface of the hyper surface of the constraints so it's strongly zero here but away from this surface it's non zero that is the meaning of equality so a theory has a certain phase space okay determined by all the qs and all the p's of the theory all the coordinates and the, all the momenta of the theory they span the phase space of the theory supposing the phase space of the theory is described by the volume of this room and supposing this is the hypersurface of the constraints then the constraints hold strongly just as a normal equality like this is equal to zero however i would write it as this so this is a weak equality this is called as a weak equality and a weak equality becomes by definition a strong equality on the hyper surface of the constraints of the theory okay so at the moment let me not go beyond this uh, when needed i will again refer back to it Okay, it can take you into very rigorous mathematics, uh, symplectic geometry, and many things. Okay, but we just remember, and it applies. It it has nothing to do with string theory alone. It applies to all, just like electrodynamics, free massless electrodynamics, minus one by four f mu nu into f mu nu, the Lagrangian density. in the standard texts you read it in electrodynamics courses that this theory has uh, one primary constraint and one secondary constraint the because this theory does not have a square of a0 if you write f mu nu into f mu nu in the component form you will find that there is no term which corresponds to a0 square uh, a0 dot is square so there is no velocity corresponding to a0 this gives rise to a constraint so the pi0 which is partial derivative of the lagrangian with respect to a0 dot is identically zero so the momentum canonically conjugate to a0 is zero pi0 is zero in free massless electrodynamics that is what we read in electrodynamics and at each point teachers don't want to make too much of digression that is the reason that some important concepts sometimes they get uh, deferred and deferred again and again okay so and then you ask that this constraint be preserved in the course of time uh, for all times so you calculate its uh, commutation relation or uh, poisson bracket with total hamiltonian and you ask it to be zero that determines if the theory has some secondary constraints or not so here in this particular example the canonical hamiltonian density itself vanishes right how you obtain so although i have written them to be full t but more correctly we could have written calligraphic t where we could later on define t uh, alpha beta to be
like that and similarly you could define h equal to h d sigma the so you you sum or integrate your hamiltonian density over all space here it's a one dimensional space given by sigma and that would give you the this would give me the hamiltonian okay now here i come back to this t11 if you simplify it further you can you can use a very simple argument i mean we, we are currently working on one point that we've shown that we have a conformal symmetry and due to the conformal symmetry that um and stress energy tensor must be traceless yes and we have a certain metric h already so shows which is diagonal so by that logic t11 must be equal to tc00 because otherwise this would not be traceless That's correct 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 <laughs> I, I'm just going to 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 write it down more explicitly. The whatever you have just said in words is absolutely correct, and I'm just going to write it down in in another two minutes. So it's good that our brains are working on the same wavelength. Uh, <coughs> so uh, I can I can delete this, and this you can simplify further. So. This is G one one is del one x mu del one x mu minus one half x one one is one into minus x dot square plus x prime square and this is x prime square minus one half of x dot minus minus plus One half of x dot square minus one half of x prime square, and this is this is equal to one half x dot square plus x prime square, and this is equal to t zero zero, and this is. The same is equal to t one one. So t zero zero and t one one are identically the same. And could I remove some of this from here? So uh, no, let me let me leave the first one. Okay. So from here onwards, I can delete. Now, uh, before I go to the trace of this, let me just mention because we have this expression in front of us. We could calculate t zero one would be d del zero x mu del one x mu minus one half h zero one. Into h dot g, and this you know h zero one is going to be zero, so it is just equals to h mu dot h prime mu, and similarly if I write t one zero, this will be equal to h mu dot zero h mu minus one half h one zero. This is again going to be zero. Into x dot g, so this is x prime mu, x dot mu. So this is going to be equal to t zero one. So this, in any case, is a symmetric matrix. So t zero one is expected to be equal to t one zero. However, the magnitudes of t one one and t zero zero are identically the same, and they should be like that. Because we could now, we could now write the trace uh, of t lambda beta, and this is So this is equals to h zero 
h0,0, e0,0, plus h1,1, e1,1, plus h0,1, e0,1, plus h1,0, e1,0. Now this guy goes to 0, this guy goes to 0. This is equals to minus 1, this is equals to plus 1. And so what you have is your minus 1 into t0, 0, plus 1 into t1, 1. And these two were already identical the same. And therefore, we have it. So, whatever it was, uh, minus of one half x dot square plus x prime square plus one half of x dot square equals to zero. So, whatever you just now said in the words, you essentially said all this, which we have just written down here. And so, it's very nice. So, we would have uh, not only a, not only, a, we would have two of these, uh, two of these constraints with us, T01, which may be x, x prime mean equals to 0 and t 